Hello there. I just finished with uh, this uh, home open uh, tournament. Uh, it lasted for seven days. I played uh, nine rounds. Uh, four games was uh, played in the uh, were played in the weekend uh, during the weekends, and uh, then I play uh, Monday to Friday each day one game uh, on the afternoon after the job. So um, I have decided to uh, to do the recap of the whole tournament in uh, just one video. It's uh, for personal reasons. I'll talk about this a little bit later. Uh, I don't have time to do, you know, um, each uh, analysis of each game in details like I used to. So I have decided to try a different format, and um, this different format will be that I will uh, show you all the games in one video, and I will not go uh, in detail, you know, each move by move, but I will just focus on some key positions, and I will tell you what I learned uh, from the from the games. So um, when you are watching the video, of course you, you don't have to watch it uh, in uh, in one go. You can I will divide this into chapters, so you can uh, you, you can watch watch it uh, in in sequences. And also I encourage you maybe to pause the video when I when I show you the position when I stop, and uh, you can pause the video and try to think about the positions because uh, th these are the key lessons. So I will share with you all the key lessons, everything I have learned from the games. And uh, I will not repeat, you know, uh, some opening principles and some 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 basic stuff uh, which I which I told uh, so many times before. So the focus here will be on takeaways. I will I will show you uh, what what takeaway did I get from uh, the each game. And now for the personal stuff, the uh, there is uh, some turbulences in my in my in my personal and uh, professional life. So uh, this was the week in which I, uh, I switched the jobs. Uh, I had a job interview in, in another company. I had uh, three jobs, job interviews uh, with the company. So Monday, Tuesday, uh, and uh, Wednesday. And then I had to have, uh, I, I have to speak with my, with my boss and, uh, you know, uh, give notice. And uh, all, all, all this was happening while I was playing the tournament. So you can imagine that my focus on chess was not uh, was was not as usual. It's not like you know I went to some hotel and then I, I just focus on chess. Um, I, I had I had to work uh, in the in the morning and you know the whole working hours and then I had to, to drive one hour to, to the tournament place and I had to play the tournament and all the time in my head was this uh, you know situation in, in which I'm quitting my current job and I I'm uh, I will be employed by by a new employer. So. Um, yeah, it's it's difficult to play uh, high quality chess when when, when uh, you you are in such a stressed mode. If you if you have ever switched jobs, you know that uh, uh, no matter how it, it can it can look easy and uh, it can be you know pleasant and everything, it's always a stress. So I was I was stressed for for personal reasons uh, while I was playing. And um, when when these uh, negotiations uh, you know started with with uh, the new company, I was even thinking of not playing the tournament. Uh, and one moment you know just 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 to, to to skip the tournament. But then you know I, I already paid the fee, and um, I think playing any chess is better than not playing uh, chess at all. So uh, this was one one of the reasons why I I wasn't so focused on chess, but. Uh, Still, it was a very good learning experience. Uh, the overall tournament result uh, was was not very good. I scored only two and a half points, but uh, as you will see, I in, in most of my games I had a huge advantage at one moment, but I just didn't have the the focus and the strength and uh, the concentration to, um, to 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 bring it all the way through. Okay, so let's get to the games. Uh, game game one in round one, I was paired with uh, candidate master. Uh, very strong player, very solid player, and realistically, I, I didn't stand much chance. He was white here, and he he just plays a uh, very good chess. But this was a very instructive game uh, because uh, the way he converted the the advantage, I made some mistakes. I gave him the advantage, and the way he converted uh, the advantage was very very instructive. So uh, I learned a lot from this game, and uh, after the game, I we analyzed the the, the game, and uh, uh, it was all very cordial. And uh, right after the game, I asked him, you know, how much do I owe you for, for the lesson? Because uh, this, this is really great, uh, great lesson, uh, how to convert to the advantage. Uh, so let's uh, just quickly go, uh, go through the game. Uh, he played e4, and uh, so I'll just quickly go through the opening moves. And uh, I, I, know, I know the, you know, the theory. I mean, I, I play pe all the time uh, Russian defense, so I uh, analyze my games and I know, I know some, some lines and some moves. 
And so um, this was all uh, mainline. Okay, taking the pawn, pawn d45, attacking the knight, just uh, developing castles, castles, attacking the knight again, defending the knight, c4, uh, you know, trying to undermine my, my pawn, so I have to defend with uh, c6, knight c3, uh, exchange the knight, uh, b takes, this is all, all theory, uh, we exchange bishops, Okay, I take the pawn, uh, he takes with the queen, and I develop the knight. And now he plays uh, bishop to g5, and this is the first uh, critical critical position. And uh, here I made the mistake of playing too fast. So, until now, until this move, so until th this one, this is also a theory move, and now I'm out of the book. So, in, in this um, moment, I should have stopped and, and think. And... Um, my opponent told me later that uh, I, I should have spent like half an hour here on, on this position because I'm now out of the book and I, I have to think, you know, how to place my pieces. But the problem is, since we played this, this is for move 14, we played these 14 moves very quickly, both of us, because we, we knew the theory. So we played very quickly. And now when the moment uh, comes to, to stop playing quickly and uh, to think, I still continue to play playing quickly, and uh, this is this is the mistake, you know, in the in the in the approach. And I ended up uh, playing a wrong move. So I played here uh, knight to f6, um, you know, just self pinning my knight. Uh, the best move here was just uh, you know queen to c7, and now I, I have connected my my rooks, uh, and I can just you know my my pieces are fine. I, I can get the tempo on, on the queen if I want, you know, to get the tempo and bring the knight in the center, and you know, the, the, game, the game goes on, everything is fine. But uh, I, I played knight to f6 instead, and now the problem is that uh, it's basically impossible to, to stop him from ruining my structure. I can either overextend or I can just have doubled pawns. So I, I realized this very, very soon that uh, I, it will be very difficult to, um, to stop him from ruining my structure. He played queen to b3, attacking the, the pawn, and I made another mistake. I played uh, queen to b6 here, uh, so exchanging queens. My logic was, uh, and I also played this very quickly. So my, my logic was, okay, if I have to, uh, to end up with a ruined structure and open king, I don't want to have queens on the board. So my king safety will be jeopardized, and uh, I want to, uh, the queens out. And here he just took the knight, I took the queen, he took uh, back, and I took the bishop. And now you can see that he has the structural advantage, so I have these double pawns, so the question is how how will he, uh, you know, uh, convert this advantage. And uh, the plan was, uh, the pattern I, I didn't even see before, I, I don't have much experience with this kind of position positions, but uh, basically the plan is to put the knight on f5, and this knight is now a monster. I cannot uh, chase this knight because I don't have a light square bishop and I don't have any pawns here. So he has to put it, put the knight here, and uh, he's just locking my whole position with this knight. And uh, later on, he can push the h pawn and uh, completely block my king. And this is what happened in the game. So I will just quickly go through the moves to to show you uh, the the position. Okay, so he's trying to. He's now uh, starting to remain over his knight. Okay, his knight is now on f5. And uh, you can see he's, he's hitting my bishop, so I retreat the bishop back. And now I was trying to, to get the, the king out. Okay, we exchange rooks. And now I play this h6, which is uh, not a good move. Uh, my idea was to, to get the king here, but he just uh, stops it with, with the h pawn. Okay. And now you can see that my king is forever stuck, you know, defending this pawn. Uh, this will be the problem. And now, okay, the game goes on. Uh, I'm I'm trying to uh, activate my bishop. So now my bishop is a, a bad piece. So I'm looking how to activate the bishop. So I'm now kind of activating the bishop, but this knight is just too strong. So maybe maybe the best chance to um, to hope for anything was just to to give up to, to give up my rook for the knight. This knight is just too strong, and uh, I mean I, I will probably lose anyway, but. Uh, these are my best chances. So just just to exchange, just to play with the rook here and to exchange the knight. This will probably be the best now. Now when I look at it. So uh, I'm. We are just now trying to do something. Okay. Okay. Sorry, you know, I will not go into details. And uh, this is the position I wanted to have. I allowed him to have the passed pawn, 
so I can activate my bishop. So now my bishop is kind of activated, but it's still a bad piece. So he doesn't have a clear plan. He's he's more of the sitting and you know uh, looking what to do. So he makes some some moves with his uh, rook. Okay. And now this is a small trick. He cannot take the bishop because he, he will be pinned. Uh, so he moves his uh, king. So now now this bishop this uh, this pin is no longer a pin because he's defending the the rook. And uh, I'm retreating. Okay, so this this is another another key key moment. So if you can see the the position, uh, it looks locked, because uh, this pawn is controlled. He cannot advance it because I'm blocking with the rook. Uh, he cannot move the knight, you know, to to chase my rook because I have this pawn attacked twice and he has uh, defend defended it twice. So he has two defenders. I have two attackers. So all the pieces are unlocked. So what what can he do? Uh, is it a draw because everything is locked or he can do something else? Well, this is where the principle of two weaknesses uh, come to play. So one weakness is uh, is is this uh, you know his possibility of promoting the pawn so I have to I have to watch for for the for the promotion and another weakness in the position if you look which pawn is undefended uh, it's uh, this pawn. So this is the only undefended piece in my position this b6 pawn and he just goes for this b6 pawn and I cannot do anything. So this is excellent uh, lesson how to use the principle of, of two weaknesses. So uh, everything is locked and now he just goes for the other weakness. So his plan is very simple. He's going with his king and uh, you know he, he'll just he'll just take uh, take the pawn. He has all the time in the world. So this is what he does and uh, I realized this so I wanted to bring my king also over. So I had to play uh, this uh, bishop to f4, you know, to protect uh, the pawn, so my king can go can go on the other side of the board. So I started to bring my my king on the board as well on this side of the board. But uh, now the problem is uh, here. I resigned because he he uh, succeeded in his plan, and uh, I could. I, I was thinking that I will hold the position with uh, this uh, king to c6, uh, which now protects the promotion. Uh, a square protects the pawn and protects the king, uh, the sorry, the rook. But now he'll just have this uh, check, and I'm, I'm over. So um, yeah, in, in this position I resigned. So very interesting way how my opponent, uh, you know, managed managed to to, to convert uh, the game. Okay, uh, let's go to the next game. Okay, so in the second game I was paired with um, older gentleman uh, who used to be a very strong player. But uh, he he got older and uh, he he stopped playing chess so often and he has some problems with his health, so uh, he was strong but uh, yeah not 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 uh, strong uh, not, not so strong anymore. So I thought I I had I will have some some chances maybe to to do something and um, as you can see in the in the video I had a huge advantage so plus twelve point four was my peak advantage here, and uh, he managed to draw. I, I started to do some uh, silly moves. So, um, the game, if I watch it, you know, emotionally, psychologically, I was playing very good moves and then I blundered one pawn, which uh, I basically, I, I was still completely winning. I was plus six after I blundered this pawn, but uh, I, I was so uh, frustrated uh, by, by uh, you know, blundering the pawn in, in such a silly way that I started to play bad moves and he equalized. So um, this is the, I think the only game in the tournament in which uh, my emotions uh, stopped me from, from winning because I was so upset of uh, winning a pawn. So, of, uh, sorry, for blundering a pawn. Okay, so uh, let me show you uh, the game. I was right here, so I opened with uh, e4 and he played the uh, French defense. And uh, I, I actually, I, I like playing against French defense. I have my uh, my way of playing, and my way of playing is to put uh, the bishop on d3 and to play aggressively for the attack. And uh, most of the French players are not used to this kind of, of play, and they get confused, and uh, I get the advantage. So uh, I play advanced. Okay, these are all the book moves. With all knights, bishops are out. And now I play this bishop d3. This is important. Uh, queen to b6. Now I take the pawn, uh, he takes, and I castle. And now uh, he has to stop uh, b5. If he allows b5, it's uh, it's over. And uh, I mean, it's not over, but uh, he's giving me a big advantage. And um, you can see he has some problems already. He cannot develop the knight here. I mean, he can, but it's uh, it's, it's questionable. 
He cannot put the knight here because then b5 just uh, wins the bishop. Obviously, he cannot play knight to f6. So he doesn't have uh, black doesn't have much many good moves here, and uh, this is why I like this uh, this approach to opening. He has to play uh, a5, you know, stopping b5. This is the only way uh, to continue. But he played uh, knight to h6, and I I played uh, b4. Uh, okay, he retreated the bishop, and now he's uh, he's basically losing the pawn. So I'm I'm taking I'm taking the knight. He takes, and now I attack the knight with the queen. And the only way to defend this is to you know to to, to completely to go completely passive. And uh, yeah, it, it's maybe this this would, wouldn't uh, wouldn't help him much. So he castled long here. So now he's giving me an attack. Uh, you know, you can you can see that I. I have a very very nice position. Uh, first of all, I'm I'm up a pawn. Uh, my pieces are active. This knight is coming uh, very soon here or here. Sorry. So I have very active, very good position already, and I'm up a pawn. So I, I'm already winning. Okay. He tries to do something along the G file. I'm uh, developing my knight. Uh, he tries to stop me. Knight C2. So I'm just maneuvering, and. Uh, and now I'm allowing uh, my rook with his queen and his king, preparing for the attack. He has to play completely passively. You can see how passive his position is now. And I'm just going forward, moving forward. Okay, so far so good. The rooks are here, ready for the attack. He has to, to play some, some uh, passive defensive moves. I just go forward, c4. He tries to do something active, but it's uh, it's very difficult uh, at this point. So now I'm first chasing his rook and then taking this pawn. F5. Now, now he's. Uh, this is also well for black. I don't know what what can he do. I mean, you you, you can see the position. This check is coming here. Um, yeah, it's it's just very very difficult to to come up with a good plan. So his plan was to sacrifice the pawn and try to liberate his pieces. So he gives, gives up the second pawn. So now I'm, I'm two pawns up. And uh, this pawn is actually uh, very, very stable. I think I can I can defend it for very long. So it's not temporary sacrifice. It's, it's a real sacrifice, even though it might look like a temporary sacrifice. So now he attacks my queen. I go to f4, still defending the pawn, uh, attacking the queen again. But now I have this uh, in-between move, uh, check. And now I can just exchange queens. And you can see that this pawn is... Uh, is now uh, not attacked anymore, so I'm uh, I'm just two pawns up in in the in the end game. So we exchange queens here. Uh, he plays b6. Okay, now I, he's giving me the outpost. Bishop uh, here threatening checkmate. So now I, I'm threatening checkmate a few few times. Okay, he's connecting the rooks. Check. Exchange. Okay, doubling the rooks. He's blocking, so I exchange again. And now, okay, now he has the threat, you know, to, to give me a check and uh, to win the, the rook. So I have to move the rook. And uh, now I'm threatening to check and to win uh, the knight or the pawn, whatever. And now he plays a knight to d6 uh, to block this. Okay. And this is uh, so far so good. I'm I'm just completely winning. I have advantage, I don't know, plus 10 or something. So <clears throat> what was uh, the problem here? The problem is that I didn't see that he's attacking my pawn. As simple as that. So I saw that he's attacking my bishop, and I saw that this pawn is hanging. So I went after this pawn. I didn't see this. So the correct move here was just to bring, you know, bishop to c6, and now uh, just, uh, you know, just just consolidate, just uh, you know, coordinate my pieces and, um, you know, try and 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 then just go go with my pawns here. Sorry, just go with my pawns and try to promote. He cannot stop it. So this was the correct move. And uh, I'm so focused that he's attacking my my bishop. And uh, I, I I was in I, I wasn't in time trouble, but I you know I was like 15 minutes. So the the seconds are, are ticking. So when the second uh, when the seconds start ticking, it's uh, it's uh, unpleasant. So I played here uh, this bishop to h7, and he just took the pawn. And now I was. This is where the emotions took over. I I was very upset of, of uh, losing this pawn, not seeing this. And also I saw that, uh, well, yeah, very soon this pawn will also fall. Because he's, he's uh, controlling everything. So I started to play bad moves now. 
So, okay, first the check, if this is okay. Now, bishop e4, okay, again, threatening mate. So, uh, he has to defend with the rook, we exchange rooks. This is fine. Okay, exchanging rooks, I am two pawns up, so exchanges are fine for me. Okay, everything is okay. And, uh, well, now, now the trouble starts very soon. So, bishop g6, I wanted to push the pawn. He played knight to c3, now this, this pawn is falling. Bishop f7, I thought, okay, if you take my pawn, I'll take your pawn. No, not, 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 these are me mediocre, mediocre moves. Not bad moves, but not, not good moves. Okay, I take the pawn. Knight c3. Okay, so at this moment, now the, now the really bad moves starts. So um, I was thinking, okay, I have to promote. I I mean, now, now it's, it's not so clear because he has two pass pawns. Okay, I have four. But he has, you know, maybe he can be quicker. Maybe we can, he can, you know, get the queen uh, at the same time as I get the queen, and then, you know, it's it's uh, unclear. So I I had to to start uh, promoting the pawn. I didn't see the point of playing f7 because uh, he's controlling the promotion square. So I had to mobilize my my other pawns. And um, the first mistake was uh, I played uh, g4 here. Uh, g4 creates a weakness. Uh, on h3. By the way, my, my algorithm, which always uh, requires me to ask myself what weakness do I leave behind, uh, would help here. But um, like I said in, in the introduction of the video, uh, given my very stressed week with my, my personal uh, challenges, I just uh, I, I, I couldn't uh, impose the algorithm. I, I was just too, too uh, you know, stressed and uh, not, not not focused, so I I, I couldn't uh, discipline my my thinking and uh, enforce the algorithm. So I was mostly playing just uh, uh, relying on, on intuition and you know some basic board vision. So this was a mistake because I'm uh, leaving H3 unprotected. So first he gives a check, and now again a mistake. I didn't see that. Uh, well, this pawn is uh, is unprotected. I have to protect the pawn, so I should have played. Uh, with the with the king either on g2 on h2, but I played on f1, and now he has this fork, so he's attacking my bishop and my unprotected pawn. So I have to move my bishop. I move it to f7. For some reason, I guess I wanted to to push this pawn, and now he just takes the unprotected pawn, and also this pawn is falling. So just in two moves, he's uh, taking all my advantage away. He just wins two pawns so, so easily. Because I, I I I just played bad moves in G4. Okay. Yeah, and, and now I I took a walk. I I, I was I, I had like ten minutes on the clock or yeah. But um, anyway, I I spent five minutes just taking a walk, and I was telling to myself, you know, okay, now I have to put my emotions aside. I have to forget that I had you know huge advantage. I had winning positions, position. Now I have to draw the game, and uh, I have to do my best. Not not to lose the game. Okay, now it's a draw, but if I continue playing bad moves, I will lose the game. So I had to, you know, pull myself together, and I I went out of the hall. I took a walk. I took a sip of water. I you know, and uh, I came back with a refreshed decision that I will now play. That I will now play good moves in order to draw. Okay, so the game continued. I I wanted to try to push the pawns, but. Uh, He's just stopping, stopping everything, you know. Now he's attacking my my pawns. I had to push this one. Okay, I'm pushing, but he has check, and then he's just stopping, stopping me from promoting. Knight h4 was was cheap trick, you know. If he takes, then I push, but he, he just blocks the pawn. And now I, I I have to go to pick up his pawns. And this will be a draw very soon. Okay, he exchanges his bishop. Okay, and now I'm, I'm just taking his pawns. He's taking my pawns, and this is a draw. Uh, so yeah, if the game continued, he'll just take the pawn, and I, I, I can take his pawn, and this is over. Okay, so it was, it was a draw, and uh, yeah, too bad. I had a great advantage. Uh, I, I got upset. I let my emotions take over. This is the only game in which my my emotions took over, so okay, one game out of line, and uh, yeah, too bad, too bad. I, I had a good chance, and um, he's, he he has a good uh, good rating, so I I would get some some nice rating points if I won if I ha have won this game. 
But okay, this is chess. Let's go to the next game. Okay, so this was a very interesting game. Um, I played, uh, the opponent was uh, stronger than me. Uh, not, not, not very stronger, but uh, he had better tournament uh, results and uh, he's 150 points higher than me. So, okay, uh, stronger opponent, but uh, I, I had a feeling that I, I can get my chances. And it was a very interesting game. Um, I had the advantage, like you see, minus two was, was the advantage. So I was winning at one mo at one point, but uh, then I lost. I mean, like like all the games, I, uh, except the first game, all the games I was winning and then I lost. So I'll just quickly go through the openings. So e4, e5, we play Petrov again. And uh, now this is the main line. And now he plays this Nimcovic attack, which I played uh, quite a few times. And this is also what I play as black. So I take the, the knight, he takes it. Now, basically, we both castle... Uh, we both want to cast along, so uh, th these are all the, you know, book book moves. Okay, okay. He castles. I play queen to this one. Okay. Now I'm preparing to cast along. And here he made a very instructive mistake. So uh, according to chess principles uh, and according to, to to chess in general, you you don't uh, go out and uh, you know start attack be before you completed your development. So uh, before thinking of doing any, anything here as white, as a matter of principle, you should do uh, two things. So you should uh, play king to b1 and you should develop the bishop. And it's essential to do this because if, if you don't, then you are, you are just, uh, you know, giving uh, huge tactical opportunities to, to your opponent. And this is where he made a mistake. And you will see how both of these mistakes uh, cost him, um, cost him to, uh, to, to get a disadvantage. So he played knight to g5 here. And so he started uh, the attack before continuing the development. And it was very, very good for me. So first, uh, now he's attacking my, my bishop. So first I play bishop to g4, attacking the rook. Now he plays f3 to stop to block. And uh, now he cannot go back to f3. So once I kick the knight away, it will be awkward. So I played uh, bishop to f5. He plays g4, kicking me. I played uh, bishop to g6, and now he plays h4. So I think he was thinking here that after I play h6, which I did, that he can play, uh, you know, h5. I think this was his intention. But the problem is after I take the knight, he cannot uh, he cannot take the bishop because his rook is hanging. And why why is his rook hanging? Because he didn't uh, complete his development. So you can see how the fact that he didn't develop the bishop. He's now paying the price already for for this. So here, after after h6, he realized that he he cannot play h5. So he uh, moves moves the knight, and I just win the pawn. And this is interesting uh, combination. I was thinking uh, a lot because I was I was afraid of you know if if he now plays this is what I was thinking. If he plays knight f4, let's say that I retreat my bishop. Uh, he takes the bishop. I take the pawn, and now he attacks my pawn. And I cannot, um, I cannot defend this pawn easily. Although now, now I see that I can by by playing queen to f7. Okay, so I was thinking that it's not easy to defend the pawn, and if I if I push it, then uh, you know he, he can come with the bishop here. So I, I was thinking about this, but my my solution to this problem uh, was uh, to play bishop to e7, and now takes takes this is what was playing the game and now if he he was to play this bishop to uh, bishop to e uh, e3 uh, d3 sorry i can play uh, queen to e6 protecting the pawn and also coming with the tempo on e2 so you can see how already the fact that he didn't play uh, this uh, king b1 uh, he's paying the price um, already for this because now he's um, uh, he, he's giving me the tempo uh, here on a2 so, yeah, uh, now I'm just up a pawn. And, ha and now uh, he told me after the game that he, he realized that uh, he's, uh, you know, worst, uh, worst out of the opening, he's down a pawn, and if he continue playing just normal moves, he will, he will uh, lose the game. So uh, he decided to go and try something wild, so he played uh, bishop to b5, which is dubious move, but uh, okay, his, his mentality was let's, let's complicate the game. And uh, here I castled long, uh, thinking that uh, I didn't even see that he can take the pawn because I'm just used to thinking this uh, about this pawn as a poison pawn. 
So I, I didn't even consider that he can really take the pawn. But he can, in fact. I mean, it's still a poison pawn, it's still not a good move, but it, it complicates the game, and he succeeds in his uh, intention, you know, to, to, to complicate the game. So he takes the pawn. And now I cannot play, uh, you know, b6 trapping the uh, trapping the bishop, because I will get checkmated. So this was uh, this was nice, nice moment. Okay, so he takes, uh, takes the pawn. And uh, now I have to do something, so I play uh, queen to e6. Uh, with the tempo on, on uh, a2, so you can see again he didn't play uh, king to b1, and now he's paying the price, and he takes the knight, and this is the key position which I um, didn't calculate well enough. So uh, the obvious move here was to take the pawn. Uh, so taking the pawn, threatening the checkmate, attacking the bishop, and this bishop is under attack. And now, I mean, what, what can he do? I, I was thinking about this position and uh, I thought, okay, I'm attacking the bishop, I'm threatening checkmate. If he plays uh, queen to e3, he's protecting the bishop and the checkmate because now he has Luft. But now I just take the bishop and uh, I'm just up, a, I'm, I just, you know, w w I'm still up a pawn. Uh, he, he still has problems, you know, he has to retreat the bishop. I have a very good position. Um, if, if he takes this unprotected bishop, yeah, I can take this bishop. I mean, it, it could get get complicated, but uh, you know, I'm still I'm still dominating uh, the game. So anyway, I missed this move. I I I didn't I couldn't calculate it all the way through. All I saw was uh, bishop a2. He can uh, protect the bishop uh, with the queen and attack my my bishop. So I wasn't able to calculate this all the way. So I missed I missed the opportunity, and this is something. Um, I mean, you you have to play moves like this. So you win a pawn, you attack the piece, you you um, you keep the initiative, you are threatening checkmate, and so forth. So this was the key position in which I lost the initiative. So the whole point of my my advantage here was the not so much that I I'm a pawn up, but that uh, I I have the initiative, and I lost it. So this would keep me in the game. And I play just possibly uh, b takes c6. Uh, I was thinking that I will be able maybe to, you know, he, that he has to move to move the bishop and maybe I'll be able to, to win the bishop. This was my hope. And uh, yeah, now he has to play king to b1 because this one is still hanging. And now I played c5, thinking that he, that, uh, he cannot uh, come with his queen on the light squares and stop me from playing uh, king to b7. And after I play king to b7, this bishop is falling because I can bring the rook as well. So for example, if he plays uh, something like, um, what would be what would be the best chance here? Let's say he plays c4, wanting to bring his queen. I play uh, king to b7 and now he, he protects the bishop, but now I can bring the rook. And uh, yeah, he, he's losing the piece. So I, I thought whatever he, he does, he will, um, he cannot stop me from playing the b7. Uh, he will be able to stop me from playing b7 if he can bring the, the queen on the light squares with the tempo. And I was thinking here, can he do this? And I thought, no, no, he cannot do this. But in fact, he can. So uh, this is very, very interesting puzzle, very interesting problem. So if you can pause the video here and try to think a way how to bring the queen on the one of these light squares. Any one will do because I cannot play uh, king to b7 with the tempo. So pause the video and find find the, the solution. Okay, the solution is uh, rook to e1 with the tempo hitting the queen and after the queen moves, I, I put it to f7, okay, then queen to e2, attacking the bishop twice and also after I take care of the bishop, uh, he can come here with the tempo. So this is this is how the game was won, and not just with the tempo, he's threatening checkmate and uh, you know all, all kind of nasty stuff. So I I played some silly moves. I mean, not, not nothing better to do. He's now winning. So he, he delivered check. I moved the king. He went queen to c6, and now his idea is to uh, you know um, to 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 win the pawn by by pinning. Uh, by pinning this uh, uh, d6 pawn. This is why I played the rook here. I thought that if I if I move the king here, he will be able to exploit this, but he can do this anyway. So king to e8, and now he just takes the pawn. Uh, this this is pinned because uh, you know it's attacked twice, and um, I desperately played h5, you know, hoping that maybe I can uh, you know bring my rook to the attack, 
and he played this beautiful, beautiful move, uh, bishop takes d6. And uh, ju just stop and think uh, about this position. You know, th uh, this position is uh, for for the cover of some book. You know, it's it's <laughs> it's excellent. Everything is pinned. So this uh, this rook is pinned. This bishop is pinned. I cannot play anything. If I take if I take the the bishop, and then he just takes with the rook, because both of these pieces are pinned. I cannot do anything. So yeah. Here, here I, I resigned the game, and um, I, I, I wasn't even so sad, you know, I was um, I was happy for him, you know, this is really, really nice way how he found the way to bring the queen with the tempo, and uh, I mean, he, he played this excellent, and now this beautiful position, and his mindset was, was very good, so he realized, okay, I lost the pawn, I'm worse out of the opening, what to do, should I just, uh, you know, let him win in the in the move, you know, play next seventy moves and uh, let him win with uh, with the extra pawn, or let me complicate the game. I can I can lose, I can win, you know. But when when the uh, game is open, the complications are on the board. Everything can happen. So uh, he adopted a good mindset, and uh, I was happy for him that he he uh, won this game. He deserved it. Okay, let's go to the next game, round four. Okay, so in this round I'm facing uh, a gentleman from Slovenia. Uh, he doesn't have a rating, so I guess this was his first tournament. But uh, he, he's, a, he's a strong player, you, you will see. And uh, again, I had the advantage, of course, uh, plus 4.8 at one mo moment, and uh, I managed to lose the game. So, uh, same old, same old. Uh, th this is a long game. It was uh, 86 moves, so I will I'll go quickly through through some some positions because it will take too long. So e4 e5. We went for the Italian game. I I know how to play this very well. A6. Okay, he's giving me just uh, the opportunity to strike in the center right away. So I'm just uh, okay. In th this 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 is the, this is the moment because uh, now now I had the the option of playing aggressively for the attack or just to continue normal development. So normal development will be castles, uh, knight c3, you know, developing the bishop and so forth. But I thought uh, since he's playing so passively, you know, I have a full center, my pieces are ready to jump in. So I decided to go and try to play uh, aggressively. I, I don't usually play like this, but uh, I, I know uh, knight g5 is a good move here. And I, I wanted to play this. I wanted to see, you know, how, how does it feel to play um, classical game in, in this manner. Uh, I play like this in, in usually in the Blitz, but uh, in, in the classical game I, I never played uh, this, this aggressively. So I, I gave it a try and uh, it was worth it. So he has to defend uh, the F7 pawn, of course. Okay, now I have to come back, but uh, you can see that his development and you now his knight is a little bit awkward and so forth. So he brings up his queen and they go E5. So, very aggressively, very openly. I mean, already I have the advantage, like, plus 2.5 or something, according to the engine. So, uh, queen to g6, knight to c3. I don't care if he takes the the, the pawn, because I will just come with the, with the rook here. So, he tries to, to get some initiative, bringing the knight back, but I'm just castling, b5. Uh, attacking my bishop, my bishop retreats. Bishop b7. A3 hitting the knight back, knight goes here, knight to h4 hitting the queen. Uh, he has to be uh, careful about uh, about the queen because, uh, yeah, the, the queen can easily be, be trapped here. So he doesn't have many squares for the queen, so he has to play queen to e6, knight to e4, just along, b4. Okay, I'm, try I'm trying to develop my bishop and to protect this, this guy. And uh, the mistake I did here, okay, let's just play play some moves. So the mistake I did here was that uh, I should have play, uh, played played uh, uh, d5 uh, several times over. Maybe, maybe not here, but uh, yeah, I, I missed I missed playing d5 in in uh, several occasions. I I I was uh, able to play d5, but I didn't. So. When you play this uh, this aggressively with uh, with the pawns up and with the pieces and uh, everything um, going forward, then uh, you, you you have to mobilize your your center pawns. You you cannot just keep them fixed. So this is the takeaway from this uh, from this game. So by not playing um, d5 in several occasions when when I could have played uh, d5, I 
I just couldn't hold the advantage. So, okay. He now takes the on the bishop. Okay. Attacking my knight. I have to defend the knight. Uh, the knight was pinned, by the way, uh, with this checkmate. So I, I had to do something about this. Okay. Okay, this is this is the key position now. He he made a mistake. So I I'm I'm threatening here to win. I mean to almost win the knight because I have the uh, discard attack. So he wanted to secure the knight and now suddenly he's giving me this great great outpost. So knight r6 is just something you have to play immediately. And now my position is I think here I have like plus four or something because this knight is very strong and uh, I have the control, the center. I mean I have everything, everything you want to. You can wish for it, the chess game, I, I have it here. But uh, yeah, I still couldn't convert. So now, now he's a changing queens, okay, and uh, this pawn will, will fall. So now I'm, I'm and still, uh, for example, here, here d5 must be played. There is absolutely no reason. I, I, I was thinking that, okay, d5 supports... Uh, d4 supports c5, which supports the knight, but it's it's silly. I, I, you, you just have to play this, you know, in, in these kind of positions. So th this is my takeaway. When when you go this this kind of, you know, I, I already said this. When when you extend your stuff in the center, you have to continue and and uh, mobilize your center pawns. So this was the the mistake. Okay, look here. He took the the knight. Yeah, and this also allows this this silly. Okay, g5, king. I, I will not comment on all these moves now. He's he's trying to pawn storm me. I have to defend. So I'm trying to defend from the pawn storm. Okay. Yeah, I, I managed to defend. Okay. No, he checks. And now he has a, uh, a nice knight. So uh, I, I had the outpost and now, now he has the outpost here. But it, it, it's not so stable, you will see later. So now I'm just picking this pawn. He picks my pawn, okay. And now, yeah, and now I'm I'm attacking this pawn. So this this outpost is not so stable because this pawn is not so stable. So uh, I now, now I'm winning the pawn. He doesn't have a good way to defend this pawn. Whatever he does, it it will just worsen uh, his position. So um, by by losing this pawn, uh, he doesn't have the outpost anymore. So he plays c6. I take the pawn. Okay. Knight f6 again. I'm taking the strong outpost. Now I'm attacking the knight. He has to come back. King to g1. Again, my advantage is huge here. So you can see that my my, my all, all my pieces are, are active. Okay. Uh, but I, I have to do something, you know. I cannot just you know be happy from the activity of my pieces. I have to do something. So now I'm I'm mobilizing my king. I'm careful of not, not letting him, you know, expose my uh, to you to uh, to use that my my exposed king and uh, if you count the pawns I'm a pawn up so uh, everything is on my side he gives check I block the check he tries to mobilize his king a4 he takes okay we exchange rooks I'm now just a pawn pawn, pawn up and uh, with more active pieces he tries to attack my my pawn I defend it and now he plays rook to h2 and I'm just consolidating. And he plays, okay, okay. Let's stop here. So this is this is the position. You can see that uh, I'm holding everything, and uh, yeah. Next move is usually is uh, most likely this d5. Finally, I can take with the check and penetrate with the king uh, with the rook and everything. So now now he he realizes that. Uh, you know his his position is not not promising, and he plays for a trick, and uh, it's a very nice trap, and I fall fall for it, uh, for the trap. So he plays first rook to c two. Okay, setting up the trap. So the correct move here was d five. I should just continued, but I thought, oh look at this b five, and now check with the discovered attack. So you can pause the video here and tell me what's wrong with this with this plan of mine. Okay, I, I hope you saw it. So he took the pawn, a takes b5. 
And I was like, yeah, check. Great, I'm winning the rook. I mean, I'm winning the exchange. And uh, he plays c5. Okay. He'll take my, my bishop after I take the rook. Great. I took the rook. And then he started laughing and he played knight to d5. Knight to d4, sorry. Check. Fork. I just didn't say this. So he, he set up the trap and I just fell for the trap. And now all of a sudden I'm, I'm worse. Okay. So now I'm... I'm I'm just losing some some of the pawns. Okay. Now he's he's two pawns up. All of a sudden he's winning. But uh, still, you know, I have two pieces, and this is technically a draw. So the there are several ways of of drawing uh, drawing the game. You can build a fortress. You can I mean these pawns are disconnected, so you can try to win to win some pawns, or you know, the last resort is uh, to exchange the pawns, so to exchange two pawns for two pawns, and to give up your rook, uh, your uh, king and bishop for the remaining two pawns, and let him mate you with uh, his knight and bishop if he can. It's not easy for the amateur, uh, it's not easy to deliver mate with uh, bishop and the knight in uh, 50 moves. So, according to the rules, if he doesn't succeed, uh, after 50 moves, the game is drawn. So my strategy here was uh, the latter one. I thought, I had a feeling that, uh, you know, since he, this is his first tournament and so on, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I, I I had a sense that he, he will not be able to mate me uh, with uh, his uh, knight and the bishop uh, in 50 moves. So I I thought that I should adopt this, this strategy of exchanging pieces. Exchange pieces for for the pawn. So he played knight knight to d4 here, bishop c1. I'm now stopping this pawn for advancing. Okay, he's attacking the pawn. I'm going here. Uh, now, yeah, uh, th this is not a good idea because then he just attacks my knight, and then he picks both of these pawns. So I have to be careful not to lose more than I have to. Uh, this could be a check. This could be a perpetual, uh, perpetual check, but he didn't allow this, so he, he gave up the pawn. So if he doesn't want to give up the pawn, it will be a perpetual check. So, okay, he's giving up the pawn. Okay, and now he's only one pawn up, and I have two pieces. So this should be a this should be a clear draw. He and and his pawns are disconnected. So yeah, I I, I should uh, the correct. Way of playing here is well, just to sit on the position, to hold everything together, and he can he, he cannot make any progress. But I was still, you know, uh, curious about this idea, you know, giving up my pieces for the pawns, and I I I wanted to have this situation in which he tries to checkmate me with uh, in, within 15 moves, 50 moves. So I I I was still playing for this uh, silly silly plan, which which is not good. So he took the pawn, I took the pawn, okay, he's still one pawn up, d6, and now I made a mistake. So I was thinking that I can give up this piece for the pawn, and he has one pawn, and I'll be able to stop this pawn forever. And uh, I'll, I'll come in this in this scenario in which you have to mate me with uh, king and bishop, with a uh, knight and bishop. So check, and I gave up my piece, and this was a mistake. So why, why was this a mistake? <laughs> Uh, first of all, it's uh, it's a mistake to assume that your opponent cannot mate you with uh, uh, bishop and, and knight. So th this was the first mistake. And the second mistake was, even if if this was true, I cannot stop this pawn with this bishop because he has the uh, bishop of the same color, so he can block my diagonal. If this was a uh, opposite color bishop, so if if, if I if I had light square bishop. Then probably this will be true. Probably he will not be able to to stop me from uh, from blocking, from uh, advancing, from um, uh, capturing his pawn. But even even so, if if I had a opposite uh, uh, color bishop, he will be able to to block diagonal with the knight. But I can have two diagonals. You know, you can, you can jump. Uh, you can you can block the pawn by 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 being on two two diagonals, and then I, I think it will be possible. But anyway. 
this is now completely losing. I cannot stop the pawn. So play g5, okay. And I I I even make made made a blunder here. So yeah, <laughs> this was this was a blunder, and he didn't see this. This wins immediately, because all all he has to do now is to is to exchange uh, bishops, because my bishop now is in the corner. Um, yeah, if he comes to this situation, it's over. So he, if he manages to exchange bishops, it's it's over. Okay, but he he, he I, I I saw this immediately. Oh, this this loses, but he didn't see this. Okay, so the game went on. So you you will you will see how um, he he showed very good technique here. So he he understood that he needs to block my my bishop, and he understood that there are two diagonals um, in which the bishop can operate, and he has to close both of them, both of them. And, and this is what he succeeded in doing. Okay, I I mean I lost this pawn anyway. Okay. Okay, so these are the two diagonals. So this diagonal and this diagonal. So he has to block both of these because now I can I can switch switch diagonals here. So he has to block them both in order to promote because uh, he has th these are two key squares. And uh, if he can block me from controlling these squares, here he can play twice, and then he can just promote very easily. And he understood this, and he played this knight. Okay, and now you can see that both of these diagonals are blocked by by uh, by his pieces, and now the pawn can just go forward. So very nice, very nice uh, technique from my from my opponent. Okay, and now he just brings, brings the, the the pawn forward. Uh, I cannot do anything. <laughs> and here. Here I was already very tired. I thought I, I thought this would be a stalemate, you know. If he takes the bishop now, my king cannot move anyway, anywhere, you know, because. But of course I can take the the bishop. So, yeah, I, I mean I, I started hallucinating after 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 this kind. I, I realized that I was lo I lost and so I just played silly moves, and uh, of course here I I resigned. Uh, so, yeah, I had the advantage. Uh, my my opponent didn't give up. He, he realized that uh, he will either uh, win with uh, some cheap trick, you know, setting up the trap, or he will not win at all. So he uh, he set the trap, I fall, fell for a trap, then it was a draw, and then I had completely wrong, you know, completely silly plan of of keep of drawing by uh, by relying on him failing to mate me with uh, knight and bishop, and then I screwed this up. So. Anyway, he he deserved uh, to win the game. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so in the next round, uh, I was facing an um, opponent who has national rating, but he doesn't have uh, he doesn't have international rating. So he plays only uh, local chess, and uh, he is lower rated than me in, in the national rating. So okay, I, I I won this game. It wasn't very very difficult, uh, very difficult game. Let me show you. So I played with, uh, I opened with e4, okay, e5, we went straight for the Italian game, okay, this was correctly, all for the book, and again a6, so this is the second time in this tournament I'm facing with this strange a6 move, which just, gi just gives me, just gives me the advantage, and uh, it was interesting, after we analyzed the game, uh, he told me at one moment that he was one move too short, you'll see how the game went, but he, he, um, he had the defense of uh, the possibility of defending with uh, switching the knight on g6, and he told me, but I was just one move too short to defend, and I told him, of course, because you played a6. So this a6 in the move five eventually gave me a tempo which I uh, managed to convert, and uh, this is this is the one tempo which uh, stopped him from uh, from defending the position. So uh, be careful the opening, uh, especially if you are black. Don't don't play moves like like a6. You know h6 has some sense. Okay, stopping the uh, the development and so on. But a6 is really really doesn't doesn't do anything. I mean I don't have my knight, so I can jump on b5. And my bishop is already developed. I mean okay, you can harass my bishop, but it can go go away safely. So don't don't play these moves. Okay, castles castles rook e1. I'm just playing normal normal moves. I, I'm, I'm, he's just giving me a tempo, and but I continue playing normal moves. Okay, d6. Uh, now I have to retreat my bishop because he will harass it. Okay, 
bishop e6, okay, bishop g5, developing, h6, bishop h6, and now, interesting, he, he tried some interesting stuff, so bishop g4, so he wanted to, to complicate me, uh, to complicate uh, the position, and uh, he did jeopardize the safety of his king, as you will see, but it, it was, wasn't so pleasant, I, I had to think uh, hard not, not to you know, make make a mistake and and uh, get checkmated. So I played h3. He went here. I'm I'm developing my knight. Rook to e8. I'm remaneuvering my knight. But now I, I also I, I already have some some problems because I cannot play the usual knight to g3 hitting the bishop because he can just you know trap my my bishop here. So for example, if I play here, he can take take and then he can trap the bishop. So it's it's not it's not so clear how to how to proceed here, and I could play g5, and now I have to be you know extra careful, because uh, he he does expose his king, but uh, if I'm not careful, he will uh, he he will uh, destroy my my king safety as well. So I have to retreat the bishop, and now he's bringing his knight. Okay, I'm now striking the center. So when, when attacked on the wing, striking the center, you know, eternal rule. So okay, I'm I'm blocking basically this this I'm I'm blocking out this diag this diagonal this bishop, bishop to b4 hitting the rook and now rook to e3. So I'm now ready to I'm uh, using the opportunity for making the rook lift. I'm I'm already looking at the possibility of the attack on the king and also you know defending these pieces which which can be. Which are which are a little bit awkward. They don't, they don't have great mobility. And now g5, uh, g4. And now I have to be extra extra careful. You know, if I, if I take the pawn, he takes. This bishop is very strong here. This is pinned. You know, it, it can be unpleasant. Or or if I take and he takes with the with the knight. Yeah. It's not. It's not pleasant. So I, I took some time here to think because it's very easy to make a mistake. I, I have a friend uh, who is uh, who is not registered play, player, but we, we we just play for fun. We we just play blitz for fun sometimes over the over the, the beer, and uh, this is how he plays. So he he always you know just pawn storm. Just uh, after I castle, he pawn storms, and he doesn't care if he get mate gets mated because from time to time you know in one game out of uh, five. Uh, I will make a mistake and he will mate me and then he's very happy because uh, he delivered checkmate and uh, I mean he, he lost uh, out of five he, he loses uh, the last, uh, rest of the four games but he, he doesn't care about the games he, he loses he cares only about uh, this one game he, he manages to win so I, I have the experience of you know uh, making a mistake here and getting checkmated so I, I, I had to play very careful here and I, I found the right move this is the bishop to h4 because this knight is now unprotected, uh, and he wanted to protect this knight by playing uh, knight to c6. I'm not sure why didn't he play knight to g6. It, it would be better, I think. Okay, but anyway, uh, after after he moved this uh, this knight, now this knight is pinned, and now I can safely take because he cannot take with the with the knight, which was the main problem, hitting my rook and so on. So he took with the bishop. And uh, now I played uh, queen to d3. So, can you stop? Can you pause the video and uh, tell me which trap do I, do I set up? So now I'm setting up the trap, and he fall for the trap. Okay, I hope you saw it. Uh, so he didn't see the trap. He played uh, bishop to a5, and the trap is just to play e5. So e5 is uh, you know hitting the uh, the knight, which is also pinned. But uh, more importantly, it allows uh, queen to g6, which leads to mate because uh, this pawn is uh, is pinned. So now it's it's very easy from now on. Uh, okay, he took this this uh, knight, and I delivered check, and then I'm just winning the queen. Okay, and he played several more more moves, but it's it just I think he played to, to the mate. Yeah, he, he allowed me to mate him basically. So it's it's now it's a game over. After after he allowed me to you know to play e5 and it's it's over, so I, I took the bishop and now I'm threatening mate. Okay, he tries to deliver check, 
and now there is a mating too, checkmate. Okay. So this is the game. I mean he he did try try to you know to, to do some counterplay. It was interesting in some moment. But uh, after I found the right defense, it was uh, it was easy game. Okay, let's go to the round six. Uh, in this round, I was paired with uh, the player of similar strength, and uh, as you can see, I again I had a huge advantage. I had minus four point two advantage, and uh, I managed to lose the game. So, same old, same old. Play well, uh, be better from the opening. Play better middle game. Get the huge advantage lose the game. This is the, the recipe. This is how my <laughs> this is how my chest looks like. Okay. Hopefully it will get better. Okay, e4, e5, again Russian defense. So knight c3, and now we go to the uh, four knights. So it's no longer Russian, now it's a four knights game. And he played a3 again. So I, I don't know what's what's with this these moves, you know, a6, a3. Not 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 a good move. Just, just, just giving me the tempo. Okay, I'm just playing actively, so bishop c5. Um, d4 was maybe even the better move, but it's too complicated. So bishop c5, b4, okay. I'm chasing my bishop away. Uh, bishop to c4, I just castle, he played d3. I play h6 because I don't want to allow, allow g5, you know, either for his knight or for his bishop, it's a good move. Uh, castles now d6. I'm just uh, developing h3 knight e7. This is typical maneuver to uh, you know if, if this knight cannot cannot come to the center, then it's best uh, you know to bring it on um, here on g6. Especially if you are black, this is uh, these two knights are very very good defenders, and uh, well uh, you, you have to think about break breaks. So I, I think I'm looking for f5 break. So it's it's, it's it's a good decision. Knight to a4, okay, whatever. Developing my bishop, he takes the bishop, okay. Now my rook is open, I'm fine. Rook a2, knight to g6, okay. Knight to h2. So now, now I, I'm thinking that he wants to do this uh, this this pawn break, but actually it wasn't his his intention. But okay, I was ready. Now if he if he takes, I I take. Uh, he links up the bishop. We can. We can exchange something or, or so, so forth. Actually, right now, yeah, if he plays the break, he's defending twice, uh, attacking twice. Yeah, okay. If he wants to play his, this break, let him play it. I just continue my developing. I'm developing. Uh, I'm connecting the rooks, and also there are some, you know, tactical possibilities here of taking this pawn, you know, bring the queen closer, maybe in the future. But he didn't play the break. He played the uh, queen to f3. Okay. Um, so now, now it's it's my time to uh, to think about breaks. So now I was I was the one thinking of already starting to, to think about uh, f5, um, f5 break. But in order to do so, I have to take care of some problems. So do, do you see do you see the immediate threat of a white here? If you, if you don't pause the video, it's it's thematic. Okay, so the immediate threat is uh, to take this pawn. And then after I take back, he takes the knight. This is this is the trap, and I saw this. And one way to to stop this is uh, what I played. So I first took the 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 bishop. He has to take, and now I put the queen to e6. So improving my queen, hitting the rook. So with the tempo, and also now I'm defending this knight. So this trick doesn't work anymore. So this was nice nice way to solve the problem. Okay, rook to a a1, and now I'm playing knight to h. Uh, um, to h7 now I'm I'm having the break here because this break is not so attractive this break looks very nice because I have the uh, rook here and he doesn't have the uh, light square bishop so I don't have to worry about opening this diagonal so bishop to b2 and now I play f5 e takes f5 rook takes f5 with the tempo and uh, I was thinking what he, can he do and he took the pawn on b7 and I didn't see this move. I didn't see that this pawn is hanging and he, he can play the move. But uh, <laughs> there, there is a theory, theory in chess that uh, sometimes you don't see these moves because they are so bad and you know that from your experience that these moves are so bad that you subconsciously eliminate these moves. 
So I would like to think of this move as being su such a situation. I don't know. It's probably just a blunder, you know. This is a, the board is too big and uh, this, this is too far away. So I probably just blundered this. But but this is this is a bad move. I mean, he's just putting his queen out of the play and allows me to uh, to start to launch the attack. So I will I will comfort myself and uh, I will I have decided to think about this position as uh, my subconscious eliminating the move because it's so bad. So let's let's leave it at that. that. So he, he took the b7 pawn, and uh, yeah, now now what to do? I mean, I just doubled here. The queen is out of the play. If, if he takes this pawn, this pawn is hanging, I, I know. But if he takes this pawn, I, I'm, I'm just crushing. He cannot bring his queen to the game. This, this is the problem. So he didn't take the pawn, he played the rook a, a to e1. And uh, now there are some, I, I had to think long about this now. I, I can bring, bring my knights. This is the the idea. There are some interesting interesting ideas about sacrificing or here. So let let me let me try try to remember what what I was thinking about. Something along the lines. For example, if I if I force. Rook to f three, for example, and now he has to take with the knight. I sacrifice another rook. He takes with the pawn. Now the whole idea is that his queen is blocked. So yeah, I, I, I sacrifice both of the rooks. But now I take this and now the problem is how can he stop me from, from mating him? I'm not sure. I mean, this doesn't have to, to play this way, but th this was interesting. Uh, something I was thinking about. Let's see what the engine says. Yeah, this is completely... No. He has the defense. Oh, he has the check. Yeah, right. And now if I go here, he can bring the, the okay. So he, he, he has some defense, okay. But uh, interesting idea. So something I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking if he if he plays, for example, uh, for example, if I go, yeah. I, 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 was, I, was, I was thinking if he, if he plays a knight to f3, you know, I, I, will, I will definitely sex. So for example, if I play something, Let's play some move. And if he were to play knight to f3, I would definitely set the exchange here. Because this wall is now... And now I can deliver mate here, or I can deliver mate here, or I can deliver mate here. Uh, the whole point is that his queen is blocked by, by this pawn. Uh, probably, knight, probably knight to f4 is very important, because then his, uh, his pawns are blocked. He cannot, you know, play... Uh, push the pawn. So maybe even, even before... This would be the correct move, yeah. So this would be the correct move, and now, yeah, th th this is what I was thinking about. Now this these pieces are, he cannot bring the uh, the rook to defense because the knight is blocking the rook. He cannot bring the queen to defense because the pawn is blocking the queen. So yeah, this is a uh, this would be very nice. And I, I I just just go go on and deliver checkmate. His king is completely over here. Yeah, this 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 would be nice. So I, I I was thinking about these these combinations, but uh, I cannot force him. You know, he, he has to make a mistake. And then I thought for another plan, and this was actually the best move: queen to a two, hitting the hitting the bishop. And it's it's very difficult to to find a good defense. He played rook rook to b one, which I hoped for, and then I play rook takes f two. And now it's. It's completely winning. It's plus four because if he takes the rook, I I take with the check and then I pick pick up the bishop. So he cannot he cannot, he cannot do this. If he moves the bishop anywhere, he just loses the bishop. So for example, if he if he moves the bishop here, I can take check 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 and just take the bishop. So I thought the best defense was bishop to c3 here, but then. I think I just take this, still attacking the bishop. And still, still, all the all the threats are, are are in place, you know. I I thought this was his best defense, bishop c3, but it it, it loses the piece anyway. So what what is the the, the best defense here? Can you find it? 
Can you pause the video and find the best defense? Let's imagine you're white. Okay, so the best defense is to realize that you lose this piece and try to counterattack. And uh, you have to notice that this piece, knight to g, knight on g6 is undefended, so he played uh, queen to e4. And now if I if I proceed and uh, I grab this bishop, he'll just grab the grab the knight. And uh, this will be one way of, of continuing the game, which wouldn't be so bad. So, for example, if takes, 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 takes the knight, and now I take the, the pawn. Okay, I'm a pawn up. At least. Okay. It's not the best, the best way to continue, but uh, it was one way of continuing. Uh, the best way of continuing here, again, pause the video, try to find the best way of continuing here. It's very, very instructive. So, if I just move the knight, he's attacking the knight. If I just move the knight here on e7, all the threats are still on the board. And now he, he, he will lose the piece. He cannot uh, prevent me from, from getting the material. So, all I had to do is to, you know, put the, knife on, the knight on the, on the safety and everything what I, what I told you here applies to here. Sorry. Yeah. But I didn't find this move. So, yeah, I, I have this completely crushing position. And I, I just decided to exchange everything. I thought, okay, he, he, he found defense, he, he defended, so let's just you know, exchange everything. So, yeah, we exchange everything. And now, at, at this moment, the, the best way to continue was to you know, take the bishop, he takes the knight, I take the pawn, I'm pawn up. But I still wanted, you know, I was hoping that I would, I would get some, some advantage, so I played the, the knight here. Uh, but now he can just force me to exchange queens. And the material is equal. Okay. Yeah. And in this position, my opponent offered me a draw. And I should have accepted it, because not, not because I know the future, I know that I, I, will, be, I will lose the game. But uh, just basic, based on, on the position analysis. So my, my thinking was, I have a passed pawn. And he doesn't. So I have the advantage. So I don't want to take the draw, because I will... I, I have the advantage, so I have a better end game. I have to win this end game. But what I didn't realize at this moment, that although he, he doesn't have the pass pawn right now, it's very easy for him to create a pass pawn. So he, he just, he, he's just two moves away. Of creating a pass pawn, and uh, and then he has <laughs> he has a pass pawn, which is uh, outside outside pass pawn, and I have a center pass pawn, and uh, he's better. I mean, computer says okay, it's equal, but he he's better because my pawn is uh, he has a king, which can stop my pawn, and his pass pawn is outside pass pawn, and my king is too far away. So I should have realized that he's better here. He has better chances of winning. He's offering me a draw, so I should have accepted the draw. But I declined because I didn't see that he can create a pass ball. Okay, so the game continued, and um, I made some mistakes here. He's just pushing the pawn, bringing his king up. Okay, and... I, I have you, you you can see I, I had to bring my my knight on this side of the board to stop to stop this pass pawn because you know, I, if, if he plays this I have to have you know some piece to, to stop the pawn so I, I I didn't realize this I declined the draw and now he's he's winning me for 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 this reason yeah he, he's I mean yeah computer says it's equal but he's better uh, no no now now I'm I'm losing so he he took this knight and now he. He attacks my pawn, and now he'll just you know wipe wipe, wipe all my pawns. So my best chance here was to uh, so for example if I if I play something like g5, he takes the he doesn't have to take immediately. He can first push. No, he can protect the pawn. This this is the solution. Yeah, and now I cannot stop him from taking the pawn, and I cannot take to another pawn. This is why I'm losing here. But I lost in even a uh, more dramatical way. 
I, here I was thinking that he will play uh, knight to b5 and then attack the pawn. And when he, when he played knight to, to d5, in my head I thought that knight was on, f, of, on b5. But okay, I, I realized that I, I, I'm losing, so I, I took the pawn. I, I didn't realize that, uh, you know, I'm blundering the knight. So I resigned. But uh, okay, this last blunder doesn't matter because I was already lost. So uh, the moral of the story here is, uh, yeah, first of all, I had this crushing position, which I didn't, uh, which, 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 I, which I didn't, I failed to realize. And then later on, when he offered me a draw, I should have uh, evaluated the position better. I, I mean, just, just realizing that he has a potential pass pawn would be enough to, uh, to accept the draw. So yeah, I, I lost the game, and uh, my opponent deserved uh, the win. Okay, let's go to the next round. Okay, so in this round I was paired with a um, weaker opponent. I I know that he's uh, not not very good in chess, so I violated my rule. So I I wasn't playing, you know, I, w I wasn't playing the board here. I was playing the weaker opponent. But uh, you know, I, I was I was tired, and uh, I I just didn't want to sit over the board uh, for a long time. I I know that I'm I'm better. I I will I will win. So I I even play for tricks uh, here, and uh, I, I I just wanted to get it over with. So I knew that opponent was was much weaker, so I I could afford this, and this was easy win. I won this game in ten moves. So uh, yeah, e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, Russian game again, four knights game, d3, okay, h6 now, uh, uh, stopping the, the development of the dark square uh, bishop, g3, bishop uh, c5, bishop e3. And now this is the moment in which I, I wanted this game not to last very long. So I decided to to give up the pawn and, uh, you know, just try to try to go forward, try to go for the early attack, yeah, gi given that I, I know that opponent is weak. So knight to d4 here, uh, giving up the e5 pawn for the initiative. So he takes the pawn, d6, he goes back, I take the knight, he goes out with his queen, and now I'm developing. So I'm giving up the pawn just for the, for the quick development. And uh, here you can see that his queen is awkward. So he has to play uh, queen to g2, here, but he played uh, queen to f4, and now I'm just winning the queen. So move ten, g5 wins the queen. He cannot go anywhere. So yeah, I, I had a sense that something like this would happen, and this is game over. So yeah, he took the bishop. We, we played a few more moves, uh, but yeah. Now I take the pawn, and now I'm I'm, I'm going for the checkmate. So. Um, if you play this to the end, I would probably deliver checkmate with just my uh, queen and the knight. So I don't even need other pieces. So he goes here, check, takes the bishop, discover check, and uh, he will either lose all his pieces or get checkmated. So he he resigned. So nothing much to say about this game. Uh, you know, I I had many losses. I had uh, only one and a half points in the seventh round. So I was paired with a weaker opponent and. This is it. Uh, not many kids in this tournament. Not many, not many weak opponents uh, here because it was smaller tournament. So it was not like in split when uh, you have you know plenty of kids. Uh, it's. I think he's the only let's say weaker player in, in the whole tournament. So yeah, this is it. Uh, let's go to the next round. So in this round, I was paired with a gentleman from Slovenia, which I played. I played against him in the, my first, very first uh, over the board tournament almost three years ago, and uh, he won me. He, he won this game, so it was like a revenge game, but uh, he won again. And uh, as you can see, again, same story, I had the advantage plus 2.6 from the opening, and I managed to, to lose the game. So e4 and now c5, the first uh, Sicilian, knight f3, knight c6, I play this bishop b5, Sicilian just out of the principle, I, it's just quick development and quick castle, this is the only reason. I, I don't know some, you know, theory or something, I just want to, you know, quick development. Uh, queen to c7, a very curious move, I didn't see this very often, so I castled, he played a6, I take the knight, this is how this is played, he takes it to the queen. Okay, so he, he didn't want to ruin his pawn structure, 
So this is why he played with the queen, but uh, it's, you know, he's getting up the queen too early. Uh, he's neglecting his development. I also have, if you look at just this, this position, you can see how much better I am. R right here. So I have a center pawn. I have one piece developed. I have castled. He doesn't have knight, n n none of this, and he has uh, uh, the queen exposed. So, okay. I play rook e1, which is already a mistake. So... Uh, here, out of principle, I should have played d4. So d4 is just a move, you know. And now I'm I'm uh, centralizing the knight with the tempo and so forth. So th th this was a mistake already. g6. Now, now d4 is you know I, I have to play d4. This this is just he's just playing too too slowly for for black. But I didn't. I, I play c3, and now my advantage starts to melt. So at this point, I have the advantage plus two or something, and now it's, it starts to melt. Okay. c3, c4, d4. Okay, c takes. I'm attacking the queen, and I'm taking the... Po okay, I'm, I'm still better. I castled, I, my rook is developed, my queen is developed, my knight is developed, and he doesn't have any development. So, I'm still better. Okay, I'm developing d6. Knight to a3, b5, just developing. Remanoring the knight. He goes out. Okay, knight to b4. We should to be seven. Okay, and now uh, there is an important decision to make. I was looking at this uh, d5 uh, square, and uh, I saw that this knight was guarding d5. He does have the bishop pair. So if I give up my second bishop for the knight, he'll have the bishop pair against the knight pair, which is usually stronger. But uh, yeah, two knights can be very, very uncomfortable. So I, I'm, I'm not afraid of playing, you know, against two bishops with two knights. In fact, I prefer having two knights against two bishops than a knight and a bishop against two bishops. Because two knights, you know, that if you're not a very good tactician, um, there's so many forks on the board that it's it's very hard to keep track. So my, my idea was to take the knight. I, I did take the knight here. But I was thinking that he, he has to take with the bishop. And now I play knight to the... Five, you know, uh, forking bishop and uh, and uh, the queen. So he he has either to give up the bishop or he, he can just take with the, his bishop and yeah. Now he, he doesn't have a bishop pair. It's just bishop against knight. And I thought I will be I will be good here. Uh, but yeah, the problem is that he doesn't have to take with the bishop. He takes with the with the pawn. And now he has a bishop pair, and the game is open. This pawn is isolated, uh, so yeah. So he has bishop pair in the open game, which is very good. And I I continued with a knight to d5. He played the uh, bishop to, uh, sorry, uh, he retreated his uh, queen to d8, and I play a4. So now I'm just you know going forward. I have centralized pieces. Everything is developed. Uh, now I can even activate my rook here, maybe, and yeah. I think here I have I have very good game, very good. He takes the pawn, and here now the silly moves begins. So the most obvious move is just to take to take back the pawn, and you know I, I can even double up here or something. But I wanted to play it cute, you know. I thought, well, I can play queen c4 with a tempo, secretly hoping that he will fall for this fork, which of course he will not. And then I thought that I I can maybe take with the queen. And it's completely bizarre move. Because the queen is great here. I mean, why, 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 why move the queen? The queen on the third rank is is excellent. You know, you, you don't want to overexpose your queen anyway. So very, very bad choice. Okay, queen to c4. He castled, and now I realize that this doesn't make sense. So I, I took with the with the rook anyway. Okay, rook to e8, and now it's very tricky because now this rook is unprotected. I have the, this makes this uh, pawn pinned, so he can, uh, if he if he takes my knight, I cannot take with the pawn. So if this queen moves, for example here, he can just take the knight for free. So I had to think, would I, would I like to, you know, play defensively or should I uh, do something else? I thought for half an hour here and I just, and I played the wrong move. So I was thinking about, you know, this check coming here. 
you know, delivering checks, uh, playing something like like this. I had I had some some ideas with these knights how to, how to move them forward, and my idea was this: okay, knight c c six, hitting the queen, and where should the queen go? If the queen goes here, it will be a fork. If the queen goes here, I will just capture the queen. If the queen goes here, again I win the queen because it's check and then the queen is gone. And if the queen goes here on d7, then I have the fork of queen and the rook. So I was considering many moves, uh, thinking for the half an hour, and then I play knight to c6, thinking, okay, he has no way, to, nowhere to go. So again, he cannot go here because he lose the queen. If he goes here to c8, there is a fork. He loses the exchange. If he goes here, uh, again, fork. Uh, I mean, he loses a. Uh, no, no, he, of course, he cannot go here because it's covered, sorry. He cannot go here, he cannot go here. And if he goes here, I fork. So he, and he did play uh, queen to d7, and only now I realized, yeah, but if I fork him, he can take the knight, and then I'm giving up two knights for the rook. It was, I guess, visualization error. And also, I cannot move this, I cannot avoid this, because now this rook is pinned. And not only that the rook is pinned, but uh, for example, if I if I retreat the knight, then he can take this knight. I cannot take with the pawn. I have to take with the queen, and now my rook is falling. So not only that I not only that this fork doesn't work because I give up two knights for uh, for a rook, but uh, I have to do this. I don't have any choice because this is pinned. So this is huge visualization error, and he was uh, playing very quickly. He spent like uh, you know ten seconds on this move, and I spent half an hour. So now now I'm I'm just losing. Yeah. Knight b6, he takes takes, and yeah, I I I just gave up two knights for the bishop, and he has now, now bishop pair against my rook. It's it's much better, but still I had some drawing chances, but uh, yeah. It required perfect play because he he, he blundered here. I will show you. Okay, so he, the, uh, this was a blunder. I'm attacking his knight, his pawn, and I don't know if he didn't see it or, or he calculated something else. But yeah, and now according to the engine, I it's a draw. So I, if I play this perfectly, I I can draw, but it's impossible uh, from the human. You know, two bishops against a rook, it's just impossible. So the game went on, and yeah, f4 was a mistake. Uh, the best move was rook to d5 here, and uh, if he exchanged rooks, sorry, if he exchanged rooks, then I have some some chances, maybe, you know, creating some pass pawns. But I, I didn't find this move, so I expanded. I, I was trying to activate my king, but yeah, it's very it's very tricky because you know. Just, just one wrong, you know, one wrong move like this one, and he, he's uh, skewering. So it's, it's difficult. I will not go into details, but uh, you can see that he's just slowly, you know, activating his bishops and he's slicing my whole my position. I cannot do anything. And now, now this pawn, he's attacking my weaknesses. I have to to go passive. Okay, exchange pawns. It's always good to exchange pawns because theoretically, if we, if we exchange all the pawns, then I have good good chances. But yeah, I have to go passive here, and yeah, now now it's over. Uh, he's now attacking my my pawn and my rook. After this pawn, this pawn is falling also, so it, it's just over. And here I. I mentally resigned. In fact, I played b5 and, and blundered the rook. But yeah, it, it's already over. I should have resigned, but okay. He took the rook, I resigned. Okay, so uh, moral of the story is, uh, yeah, I, I, I just uh, overcomplicated. Uh, I was overthinking. So in, in this, this position was the most instructive one. Let me go back. Yeah, this one. So. Just take with the rook. Why? Why? Why move the queen here? It was just stupid. And then, you know, here, visualization error. 
bad tactics, bad calculation. Okay, and let's go to the final round now. Okay, here I was right again, and I was playing against um, Candidate Master, uh, older gentleman, he's 74, and he had a very bad tournament. This is why we got paired in the in the end. And uh, he used to be a very, very strong player, uh, strong Candidate Master, very strong Candidate Master, but now uh, he's older and uh, doesn't play so much. So I thought that maybe I could get, you know, lucky and uh, win a titled player, earn some rating points. And I did, I did play the game well. And you, see, you can see, again, I have advantage plus 3.7. It was my peak advantage. And uh, yeah, I managed to lose the game, of course. So let's let's see the game. E4, E6. So again, French. I like playing against French. I play this aggressively. And he told me that he that I, I, I played very well, you know, the attack and everything. So knight c6, knight f3, bishop, bishop. Uh, this 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 is the same, completely the same uh, uh, order of moves like like in the game I showed you just two rounds ago. Uh, queen b6, d takes c, he castles. And again, uh, I discussed the same position. So he has to play uh, a5 to stop me from playing b b5, and uh, he didn't do this. So he's uh, sorry b4. So he's allowing me to play b4. Okay. And now you can see that already I'm better. Rook to e1, protecting the bishop, f6. Um, now, bishop f4 is actually the, the best move here. I was thinking bishop f4, but I, I didn't. I wasn't sure how to respond on g5, and then afterwards f5. So I just decided to, to, to take the pawn. Okay. Now I'm developing my, my knight. Castles. Knight b5, hitting the queen. Now centralizing my knight. He has to he has to protect this pawn. Now this is the this is the weakness. So this is why he played the queen here because you can see that I make some serious pressure over this pawn. I'm developing now my, my bishop. So since now the queen is no longer on this diagonal, I can develop the bishop. And now he attacks the bishop. Okay, there are several ways of responding here. I responded with uh, I moved the bishop on e5, and now he played knight to f4. And I think here I missed I missed the opportunity of winning the pawn. No, I didn't because he has yeah. I, I was thinking about this, you know, taking, taking, and then here. Yeah, but still it's defended twice, so it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, he's attacking my my uh, bishop, so I have to retreat the bishop. But I'm I'm still I'm still better. Knight to e5, knight takes e5. You can see that my pieces are very active. This is a kind of outpost already. Knight bishop to d6, okay. Takes uh, takes the bishop. I don't want him having the bishop pair. And I'm, I'm still looking at this pawn. So I'm looking that I can chase the knight away and uh, win the pawn. But the problem uh, here is if I chase the knight here, he can come and deliver check. And then if I move the king up, attacking the knight, he can just play e5, you know, protecting the knight and attacking my knight. And um, I did watch this h7 square, so my variation in my head was, you know, I can maybe uh, threaten checkmate here, here, um, almost checkmate because after this, this, this is coming. But what, what was I thinking here? Why this doesn't work? I guess he can just defend by playing g6. Now this is defended, so I take. He takes, I take, he takes, I take. I'm not sure I went this far. I, I, I think I, I, I even might have, but I didn't like it. And I was thinking that, uh, yeah, so, something along these lines. Okay. So this is why I didn't play g3 here. I didn't like this. So I played uh, queen to g4, uh, thinking that uh, now I can play g3 and he cannot play here because uh, I'm covering this. And also I'm now pressuring this very strongly. So I, I thought I was winning the, the pawn here, but he found a very, uh, very nice move. So first he defended the pawn and uh, he brought another rook in the game. Then I played g3, thinking that, okay, he has to move the knight now, and after he moves the knight, 
well, I can even take the knight and then take the pawn. So I'm winning this pawn and this pawn is falling. So I thought I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm completely winning. But he found a great move. So I'm offering you to pause the video and find the very nice move for black, which holds the position. Okay, the move was h5. Attacking my queen, I have to move my queen away and then he can deliver check. So queen to d1, he delivers check, I go to g2. Okay, and now he miscalculated and he, this is how I got to the biggest, now the game is, no, I think maybe he, he's, he's better now. But um, I was better now, he was better and now, now he miscalculated. So he can win this pawn, he can just play a uh, knight, knight to f2, hitting the queen and winning the pawn. But he wanted to do, do something else, so he took with the rook, sacrificing the knight. I took the knight and he thought that this will be, you know, almost a mate. But he didn't see that I have the defense uh, bishop to f5. So he realized this after I, I moved the king and he was thinking a lot here. And he realized that this is his best, best move anyway. So he played a5, um, sorry, e5 uh, check. I have, have to block. Takes, takes, takes. Okay. And now I, I retreat here. And now I'm uh, up the exchange. But he has a very strong connected pass pawn. So I would say it's it's about equal. Maybe I'm, I'm a little bit better. But now I started to play some very, uh, very bad moves. So first he played a4. And now I was thinking that I have to play c4 in order to open files and lines for my rook. So I played a, a3, which is very slow. A3, the idea was that uh, when I play c4, he cannot take my, my pawn. So um, the best move was here, uh, you know, rook f1 and, you know, so trying to get activity or the f file. I can control f file very easily. So just it, it just comes down to very, very simple chess principles, you know. Rooks belongs on the open file and, you know, sees the open file and so forth. So the, the only open file in the position is the f file. So rook f1 is just natural, normal move. I should have played this right away. But I, I complicated, yeah, a3, and he played a queen to e5, and now, yeah, he's hitting this diagonal, I'm making uh, preparation for pushing this pawn, and then continue playing silly moves, I play uh, queen to b3. So now I'm putting my queen completely out of the game, and, uh, you know, thinking of c5, the good thing is that I'm pinning this pawn, but uh, this queen is, is too far away. Now I don't like it, and he played h4. And now... You can, you can pause the video and find the best, best move for, for white, which I missed. So my, my attention was immediately drawn to the g3. And uh, all, all, I, all I saw is that uh, he can take the pawn, I take back, and then he, he almost delivers checkmate. So I was, I was so afraid of this that uh, I played uh, rook to e3 to protect the pawn, which is a blunder. So I had, some, I, I had almost winning chances here by playing rook a to d1 you know, pile, piling up on the pinned pawn. But in order to play this, I have to realize that if he takes the pawn here, he doesn't have time to deliver checkmate because I can force uh, exchange of queens by taking the pawn with the check. So we exchange queens and now his bishop is hanging. He has to, you know, move move his bishop and now he's losing the pawn. So this was my, my winning chance here in the end game. But uh, I was... I was so focused and so afraid of this that I didn't see that uh, this actually means the game. So this was, this was my chance and after this everything went strange. So now I, I'm, I'm still afraid of this. So I placed this stupid move, rook to h1, you know, hoping if he takes. Now, now he cannot take because I take with the check. This was the, the idea. Queen to g5, now he's just, you know, preparing a final blow. Uh, attacking my rook, rook to e, rook to e2. Uh, the idea was, yeah, the, the better move was here to to just protect the rook. The idea was when he pushes here, I want to control this, so I don't get get checkmated. Rook to f8, and now the final, the stupidest move ever, queen to a4. So it, I mean, it's not so stupid. Uh, it, it has some merits. So my my idea was to come here and then uh, you know bring bring the queen uh, back to the action 
I was thinking how to bring the queen, you know, because this rook is here. It's I mean, all my pieces are discoordinated. This this this, this is the main problem. So when I got to the L game against uh, um, instead of um, consolidating my pieces and coordinating my pieces, uh, all my pieces got discoordinated. So they're just stumbling upon each, each other. So if if I wanted to bring the queen back with uh, d1, uh, it's it's too slow because this diagonal is closed and so forth. So queen to a4 uh, had the idea of bringing the queen back in this way. And if he tries to, you know, if, if, if he moves the rook, then I, I have the check. And here I just missed a very strong move. So pause the video and try to find the winning move for black here. Very nice move. Okay, hope you found it. The move is h3. Check. And now if I take the pawn, uh, he, he wins the rook. If I don't, which I didn't, the only way, the only other legal move is uh, king to g1, now this is just mate. Me, I, I, I can just throw in my pieces, but it's basically mate. So yeah, this is it. I lost the game. So overall, what happened? I had advantage in all of my games uh, instead. Only, only the first, only in the first round, I didn't have the advantage. In all other uh, rounds, I had the advantage. You saw plus two, plus twelve, plus four, plus five, plus three, and uh, yeah, I I couldn't uh, went all the way through. So was it because I had this uh, stressed uh, situation at my work, at my in, in my other stuff in life, or I just like experience? I don't know. But uh, the recipe is that uh, I just need to. To continue and uh, to go out to play, to participate in as many tournaments as I can to gain experience. You know, I hope that uh, there will come a moment in which I will be able to uh, convert these advantages. And uh, if I come to the point in which I can win the game once I get the advantage of uh, plus three, uh, then you know, I, I, I will, my rating will will jump in uh, three hundred points for sure. So. Yeah, let's let's just let's just uh, be patient and uh, get the experience and uh, hope for the next tournament. I don't know when the next tournament will be. I hope in uh, January, but uh, since I'm switching uh, jobs, I'm not sure I will be able to get uh, the days off to go to the tournament. Uh, we'll see. I, I hope the next tournament should be in January, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this was a long video. If you stayed with me all this time. Thank you. Cheers. Congratulations. Congratulations on your patience. And uh, well, I'll see you soon with uh, more chess. I have another one very nice uh, chess story, which uh, doesn't include me. Uh, it includes my friend from the club. So I I might do the video about this uh, interesting chess story, uh, adult improvement uh, chess story. Uh, stay well. See you soon. Cheers.